Hi there, I am the CRM Ninja, and on today's episode of The Oops Fact, I have John Russell. Welcome to the show, John. Hello, EY. How are you? You okay? I am well, thank you. I am well. How are you doing? Yes, I'm very good, thank you. Not too bad. A nice chilled weekend. Well, we can't really do anything, so you know the, <laughs> you know the drill. Yeah. I, I do know the drill. Now, for people wondering exactly who John Russell is, John is better known by the moniker John Does Flow which I believe is your Twitter handle, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I, um, I started a blog uh, probably like 12, 14 months ago, 16 months ago, something like that, um, uh, just before uh, Microsoft Flow changed its name to Power Automate, hence the John Does Flow uh, Twitter <laughs> handle and blog title. But I quite liked it. And yeah, it started off, um, started off talking about um, Microsoft Flow, Power Automate, a uh, bit of power up stuff and then kind of moved more into um, that as well, but alongside kind of uh, mental health and uh, kind of community kind of posts and engagement. Yeah. Indeed. Well, although Microsoft may choose to rename its products from time to time, as we, we know happens, I'm not going to mention any specific names here, of course, but really as, as the other John, aka John Levesque would say, hashtag flow fan, it stays, it's still there. So I think John does yep. flow is still great. Now, I have Thank to you. ask you, I've, yeah. taken, I've, I've taken a look at your blog, some really great articles, and I really suggest that people go and take a look at it. But I know that a passion of yours is photography, hence my background of some vintage cameras. Now, have you ever used Power Automate together with photo your passion for photography and put the two together? Yes, I did actually. Um, I did it for a uh, kind of private client. This was quite a while ago, and um, <coughs> I, I I noticed from from personal experience where I've been sending out a contract to a client for photography. Sometimes that could take like an hour and a half to two hours just to kind of get it all written down. Um, wow. So what I did was instead was I wrote a, a I wrote a I had a Microsoft form. Uh, the form would kind of capture some details. That would then send an email to the photographer. The photographer would then go through a kind of approval step, including okay. like setting the price, checking the details were correct. And then uh, once that had happened and he'd approved it or they, she'd approved it, um, it would send the contract in a Microsoft Word template to the um, client uh, and update their um, uh, calendar, both on the photographer's side and on the wow. client's side. Um, as to when the booking would take place yeah so uh, I started using it myself because I, I, I started just before probably about a year before coronavirus I was doing quite a bit of photography on the side um, okay and and I and I used it myself to to kind of onboard onboard new clients and stuff like that so yeah it was it was it was a very time consuming process before but you know uh, once I did that then it you know it's like two minutes and it was done yep I mean, that's really the power of automation and what Power Automate does and where we see so many business cases for where people are doing so many manual tasks. Power Automate flows can really handle those sort of things quite well for the most part. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So with photography, I, I have to ask you, the image that's behind me is of vintage cameras, but are you into Canon or Nikon? Hmm. Canon. Uh, but the only reason why the only reason why really is when I first started I had a friend that worked for Canon and um, ah. he get me some really good deals on bodies and lenses so um, yeah that was that was the main deciding factor it saved me a lot of money got it got it I, and I hear that photographers you know or people with at least definitely at least a good amateur interest and definitely up to the professionals you know sort of pick one and stay with it almost for life it, it takes a lot to switch them over yeah, it is a it is a it is a life choice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Good, good. And have you had the chance to capture anything recently? Um, Any good pictures or good scenes? Yeah, there's been a we've been on a few walks recently. Um, so t I, I take a lot of landscape photography. Um, I was hoping for some snow today so that I would have gone out and taken some photo, but we we didn't get it. It's been it's been hinting at it all day, but it didn't it yes. didn't really happen. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, they just say the forecast for the rest of this week is snow continuing. So hopefully you'll be able to get some really, really great landscapes. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
It would be. And some great backgrounds as well. I mean, at the moment, as we can see, you're just out of this world. But, you know, you could have a background with you in snow. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely change it for the next time. Definitely. Good thing. So from photography to Oops Factor, what story do you have to share with us today? I think uh, I think one thing that I'm super passionate about is mental health. Um, okay. And I suffer from anxiety myself. Uh, luckily for me, in the last like six months or so, it's been it's been quite good. But there have been okay. times where it's been pretty, pretty bad. Um, and what I wanted to talk about really was around the fact that I believe it's really important to talk about your mental health with someone. Um, okay. And, and I have definitely fallen into the trap where it's kind of a, like a, a, a catch 22 circus situation where you just, you just feel terrible. You sometimes don't really know why you feel terrible and you sometimes find it very hard to vocalize how you're feeling. Um, so one of the things that I said about, um, with my wife, who is my, uh, you know, you know, uh, my wife's amazing, and she really helps me on 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 the on this front. That's um, really really great to hear. Yeah, it's it's very nice. Katie, her name is. I better give her a mention. Um, uh, Hi, Katie. She, she she's very good at spotting when things aren't so good, and okay. will get me will get me to kind of open up and talk. Um, but I think what I'm trying to say badly is that there were times it right at the start of when I when I began feeling well maybe not when I began feeling anxious but when I was diagnosed with anxiety and I didn't really talk about it as much as I should have done and that was probably something that I could have done better uh, I could have probably helped myself much more if I had started talking about things a little bit earlier yeah okay so are there any sort of pointers or stuff that you can point to that you know when you get in a certain mood or something keys you off that you know that it's important to go talk to somebody or this potentially unique to yourself or just general things so, that people could look for? So, yeah, I mean, anxiety is very subjective. It affects people in very different ways. My anxiety is definitely different compared to somebody else's. Um, okay. But there are people around me that, like there were people that I used to work with who could spot things in my behavior. Like, for instance, I would, I would start talking faster. I would start okay. responding to things quicker and maybe not really taking a bit of time to think about what I was about to say. I would just start talking or I would start emailing. And um, I remember one lady, Hannah, um, who is now a very close friend. Um, she said to me once, I, you know, are you feeling OK? You seem to be talking a lot faster. And I, I hadn't even noticed it. And and that's something that you as for me that's something that i can notice really quickly now is that if i start speeding up then it normally means there's something something going something going awry yep so so over time you've sort of learned what your tells are i, I guess would be a way to describe yeah. it and that you know you need to sort of address it at that point do you want to that's, see what those that's that's right but it's also about the other people around you knowing what those tells are and usually the people around you are the ones that notice the cues much more than you do okay so yeah. how would you suggest that people i mean look the last year or so has been hectic on a lot of people and you know companies are talking about mental health left right and center and things and support it but what would your advice be to people who may not even know that they're suffering from it and, and, and should talk. What would you say should be, you know, a couple of things that they should do or implement or, or change? Um, one, of the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the most easiest techniques, actually, that I found in recent years is, um, is around kind of distracting your mind from what you're currently feeling. So if I started to feel anxious, the first thing that I would do is whatever situation I'm in, I would try and take myself out of that situation. So I would, okay. I would physically change my perspective of where I am. So if I was in a shop, for instance, and I started feeling bad, I would go outside. That's the first thing to do. Just changing your surroundings is a, is a good start. Um, okay. there, there's another technique and I, I, I might not get this right, but there is another technique where you, you kind of, you think of five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things that you can smell and two things 
um, two things I can't remember the other senses, but <laughs> two other things, and one that you, you one thing that you tell about yourself, like a truth about yourself, and what that's doing is that it's um, kind of telling your brain to think about other stuff, not to dwell on what is potentially making you anxious. Um, okay. Those are really those are really good um, kind of quick quick fire things to 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 fix things. The other thing, like I've said, kind of throughout this, really, is to talk about it. But that that can be very difficult. Um, uh, but but you need to be surrounded by people that you know that love you and support you, and that uh, yes. are there when things aren't so good. Yeah. So if somebody thinks, okay, I get a bit anxious from time to time, or I can get a bit nervous, even if they don't suffer majorly from mental health problems, it just may be again we all get anxious from time to time. Uh, uh, about things you know sort of your boss calls you into their office and you immediately sort of have that sort of gut-wrenching feel like oh oh, what have I done now um how would you suggest that they could approach people near them you know obviously we have people that we work alongside who we trust well and we get along really well with but those sort of conversations could be a bit difficult so how would you advise people to sort of try and open a conversation just to make sure that you know they're doing all right and that they can have other people watch out for them so I think, uh, yes, yeah, so it's a very common question that I get asked around this. And I think it all just, it's all about just being honest with the people around you and honest with yourself. Um, okay. I think there have been times where potentially I have not said how I'm feeling and other people around me have misconstrued that as me being dismissive or not interested. Um, <laughs> and what I'm trying to say is, is that to be your true self if you kind of project that and explain try and explain how you're feeling then um, others around you won't second guess and guess how you're feeling they they will know that's how you're feeling so yeah but 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 that's this is all caveated with it is it is very difficult to talk about things like this so yes um that's that's why i try and at any opportunity like you know your podcast i do try and make this the topic of conversation that I'd like to speak about because um, I found it difficult to talk about but now I've got to the point where I'm able to be able to conf- confidently explain how I'm feeling and and confidently hopefully explain to other people that hopefully might help them yep I mean I have to say from my perspective it's really really brave of you to do that I know it takes a lot of you know, courage to be able to actually do that especially if you know that you can go through this sort of thing to be able to speak up publicly and I, I applaud you for it and I'm sure all, you know the viewers listeners and watchers are applauding you for it as well um and I have I'm loving the fact that you know you feel that you can bring this to this episode and share this with others because again I, I'm sure you know other people as well over the past year have suffered and stuff and it's just you know going forward it's not ending in the next few weeks you know maybe the next few months things may get a little better hopefully they'll get a little better but still we need to be I guess more vigilant around these sort of things you know and watch out for our team and just check in with them and say you know hey are you doing all right is everything okay sort of thing yeah something something that I think you can that anyone can do um is and something that I, I try and do every time you know I'm speaking to people on teams or whatever um, is rather than rather than as soon as you ask them, as soon as you engage in conversation with them, rather than asking them something about work straight away, just ask them how they're doing okay. before you before you ask any other questions. Um, and and I make a point of trying to do that. Uh, they might not necessarily have the time to answer that question, but you know you 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 kind of put that question in the air and if they want to and if they've got time to then then hopefully they will but i find that it's um it's a it's a little bit uh, easier way of communicating you know it not only does it potentially help them but it also builds rapport with people that you might be working remotely with that you've never met before uh, agreed very much that and as you said you know they may not have time then but they know that you've asked it which means that they hopefully will feel comfortable enough later on if they needed to reach out to be able to reach out to you because they know that you've asked that already then at that point yes absolutely yep yep wonderful well definitely not an easy topic and one's definitely not going away but really appreciate your time in in coming to share that with us um as i said i i know people of the past you have struggled with this sort of thing i'm sure you have as well and it's not something that's just going to go, go away and it can't just be swept onto the rug because that just causes more and more problems as we can yep. see when it's yeah, not exactly 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your time, Ewa. I appreciate you asking me on. No, thank you. Absolute pleasure. Viewers, we hope that, you know, you've learned. I, I, well, I, I know that I've learned a heck of a lot from John. I hope you've learned any, you know, somewhat or as much of me from this. And remember, it's important to reach out to those around you and check. It's absolutely fine, especially in today's climate. Um, so hope that you've at least taken away some stuff from this episode. Feel free to check out the rest of the Oops Factor playlist subscribe to the channel and check out the blog. And if you would like to come along and share your own Oops Factor story or something important to you, hit the link below, reach out to me, fill in the form. I'll drop you the details and have you on the show. Have a great day.